Doctors of Reddit, what's the most outrageous self-diagnosis that you have heard from a patient? A doctor here. I had a patient insist she had a fever once, and when I pointed out that our thermometer did not record a fever she told me I'm not sure they taught you this in medical school, but when Asians get a fever their temperature doesn't go up. Yup, I missed that lecture. At the psych hospital. We had a difficult patient, violent, making wild accusations, completely psychotic. During treatment team meeting at the psych hospital, when we were working out her treatment plan, she suddenly started screaming that she'd gone blind, that she couldn't see, and if we cared anything about her we'd help her. This time, she had a point, though. The lens of her eyeglasses had fallen out and landed in the breast pocket of her shirt. Had a patient come in once to you to wait game that she thought was due to being pregnant. Made sense, except she had taken more than half a dozen pregnancy tests and they were all negative. She was convinced she was pregnant though and wanted me to check. I tell her okay, it'll do a blood test since we can detect pregnancy earlier with that and she refuses. Says that she just wants to pee on the stick in front of me and have me read it. So I say sure, and lo and behold, it's negative. Little more questioning, and it turns out she'd been eating literally nothing but chicken wings for weeks. When I asked her why in the world she would do that, she replied that she just really liked chicken wings. I had a patient a few weeks ago who was in her late 80s come in worried about having a sexually transmitted disease. She goes on to tell me that she hasn't had sex since her husband died in 1994. I'm an allergist. My mom took my sister and me to the doctor when we were kids because we had weird bumps all over the back of our tongues. We were diagnosed with tastabuds. Edited for my grammar homies. Vet student here. I've had some dude with a super aggressive dog diagnose the poor thing with neural instability causing his aggression from an online consultation with a homeopathic shaman. He then came into the clinic with instructions from the shaman that he wanted the vet to carry out including rubbing the dog all over with a $200 healing stone, despite the fact that the vet had obviously the more reasonable explanation. He didn't want to believe leaving a dog in the backyard without much human slash animal interaction for most of its life could cause aggression. Go figure. Pharmacist here. I've had more than one patient run to me screaming that they looked up their ash on WebMD and must have Stevens Johnson syndrome. Actual diagnosis. Contact dermatitis from laundry soap. Edit. If you begin taking any medication especially Lamotrigine, Bactrim or carbamazepine and develop a rash, then yes you should call your doctor immediately. Erin family practice mid-level here. Had someone come in one day saying they had wires and fibers under their skin, including a little ziplock bag of you guessed it wires and fibers that they had pulled out, he said with a needle. Now, this is more Jellens, a well-known psychological entity, but to see it so blatantly like you read about in the textbooks just blew me away. He actually believed it. Very unsettling. Paramedic here. Technically not a doctor but here goes. Walked in the door to a young male with chest pain. As I walked up to him and introduced myself, he said I have pericarditis. I felt like telling him, umm not sure how you would know if you did, but well run some tests and see what we have. Put an ECG on. Took him to the hospital for more tests. We found out the final diagnosis by the hospital staff was, surprise surprise, pericarditis. So there you have it, the patient was right. I still have absolutely no idea how this kid knew that. Edit, btw there was no prior history of pericarditis, nor any issues with chest pain at all. Guy comes into my older one day with an L in his hand from an accidental discharge of an L gun. Nurse is checking him in and asked him to rate his pain on a scale of 1 to 10. He replies that it's only about a 3. We all look at him like has nuts, because our pain is at a 5, and we're just looking at him bleeding. Plus, this is a charity hospital, where 99% of the patients are sitting in bed, casually texting or chatting on the phone, but still rate their pains as 10 tenths. You get the picture. So, the Tridge nurse rolls her eyes, and asks him how it could only be a 3. He responds by saying that one morning he was cooking his girlfriend breakfast. They were especially hungry that day because they had just been a bit frisky when they woke up. 
since they had just finished, he wasn't wearing any pants. Well, he says that when he bumped the pan and the hot bacon grease spilled onto his testicles, that was certainly a 10 tenths. So, to him, a nail in the hand only rated a 3 tenths. Kinda opposite to what everyone is saying, but once saw a guy with a foot that looked like death probably and treated diabetic. He only went to the ER because his sons dragged him. He literally had his foot inside a plastic bad bag was tied around his ankle because of the smell. He insisted he was fine and to be let go. The amount of horribly sick patients that think they're just fine is too damn high. Psychotic patient tried to convince me he had kittens playing inside his chest. Not so much. The atrial fibrillation and palpitations were real, though. Dentist here. 27 year old patient comes in with mother. Mother is on disability. Patient has large amounts of decay on every single tooth in his mouth. Kid absolutely will not even listen to having his teeth pulled. And dentist placed public health office so most are uninsured slash low financial status. Really should have most, if not all of them pulled. Agreed to do a mock-up treatment plan which came out to roughly $4,500 that's with a sliding fee discount of 50% for the lowest financial level. They agree to pay Mom Plunk's $800 cash down for root canal to start off. I ask what happened for his teeth to get that bad. Stupidest answer I've had yet. A dentist before told me to mix dollar store mouthwash with peroxide and rinse with it. It absolutely wrecked my teeth afterwards. Mother agrees and swears that same thing happened to her husband. Older brother is getting all of his pulled. My wife is a veterinary nurse. Someone brought their dog in because of small growths into lines along the dog's belly. The dog was diagnosed with nipples. My elderly friend is the queen of self-diagnosis. She tells the doctors her prognosis and rarely follows through with their treatment for her actual issues. My personal favorite is that she produces too much electricity. Because of this she has issues with anything electrical. Namely computers, cash registers, bin pads, and my personal favorite, gas pumps. She is afraid she will blow up the pump, so I fill her tank for her. In reality she is confused by technology and never wears her glasses. She was recently put on vitamin D pills because she rarely goes outside. Her house is basically a black box inside. I'm afraid to find her apt in foil one day. Not a doctor once had a patient come in who was convinced he had colon cancer. He was just constipated. Had an overweight young woman come in saying that she was pregnant and the baby's foot was protruding out of her vagina. We get her back quickly. Start a set of vitals. And she is terribly calm about the whole thing. Ended up she was not pregnant at all. Just crazy. An older gentleman came in complaining of headaches. During his history, he became agitated and kept insisting that the government had been experimenting on him by dusting his house, food, water, etc. with anthrax. He was quite certain that there was anthrax in his brain because he could see it in the back of his throat. Turns out he just had an upper respiratory infection. So. Same thing I guess. Not a drive. But I was in the air in college in New York City for some crazy stress I think I was over caffeinated. And had not slept in two days from studying but anyway. I ended up just being dehydrated. And they gave me in fourth and let me hang out there for a while. In the background I kept hearing this guy yelling I'm gonna faint. I'm gonna faint. And it seems pretty legit. So I was getting worried. Finally, he yells it out one more time. And a doctor walks by and says, Mister, you're in a hospital bed, so if you faint, I think you'll be okay. Yeah. I once had a girl who said she had syphilis, because she got like this ulcers in her mouth, which were coming and going, and she said she had zits on the back of her tongue. I looked and it was her taste buds, no other lesions to be se I told her that primary lesions in syphilis almost always cure completely so, if those ulcers were appearing and disappearing every once in a while it was very unlikely. By that point she had gotten a lot more relaxed, and the consult went great, and she went home feeling a lot better. Still, I made her get an STD panel, because she was sexually active, young and in doubt of her partner. Next consult she shows up saying document. I think I do have syphilis. She did. I learned a valuable lesson that day.
Cool thing was she wanted to do her treatment and follow up with me because she told me she had seen a lot of people before me but no one bothered to check. As a resident I had one patient wait in the air waiting room for 8 hours for painful lips. Diagnosis, chap lips, prescribed chapstick. Another patient waited the same amount of time in the ed waiting room at the county hellhole hospital. The reason, mosquito bite. One stupid mosquito bite. He said he was a hemophiliac and was afraid he would bleed to death. Edited typo. <laughs> Dentist here. I had a patient come into my office, absolutely certain he only had gingivitis and needed a normal cleaning. All because he had googled his symptoms and believed he could get a normal clean and go back home and do oil pulling after, which would somehow miraculously heal his gums. Would not allow me to take the razor or deep clean his teeth, which he needed, because plaque was formed well below his gums. He even told me his gums were bleeding from just smiling, moving his mouth etc. He insisted on just a regular clean, and then accused me of trying to make money off him, when I basically put my foot down, and said I won't be working on his mouth, unless he allowed me to do my job properly. I was glad, when he decided to walk out, and never come back. I'm not a doctor. I once had a middle school band student who had to miss a rehearsal, because she had bruises all over her legs. The doctor's diagnosis? Unwashed blue jeans. Not a doctor, but a lady I nursed, had an acid's accumulation of fluid on the abdomen. That gives it a hard swollen look, and she convinced all the ladies in her ward bay, that she was pregnant. She would walk around rubbing her bump. I was coming off an all night LSD experience, and managed to convince myself, on next to no evidence, that I had anal cancer. I wound up calling my mother in a panic. It was 7am, and I was 25. And my girlfriend was there too. They talked me down, but I wasn't satisfied, until it had a colonoscopy and minor surgery. Turned out all I had was constipation, hemorrhoids, and a lipoma in my thigh. Backslash 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 slash obligatory gold edit, thank you, stranger, for making one of my most embarrassing stories worthwhile. I'm still a hypochondriac, but at least now I can be anxious in the lounge. Self-diagnosis? Maybe not but a woman once asked me if I could find the rock of crack that she shoved in her vagina the day before, when she was pulled over by the police. She wanted it back, if possible. My dad is a physician, and has got a lot of great stories. This is from memory, if anyone is interested I can ask my dad about a few more stories, but my favorite is when a little old lady who didn't speak English came into the clinic with a live chick she claimed the chicken had the spirit of her dead husband in it, and it was giving her nightmares. She told the check-in desk she wanted to talk to the doctor about what to do. So my dad, the only guy who spoke Spanish at the moment in the clinic, listens to her and doesn't quite know what to do. He asks the lady if she has tried getting rid of the chicken. The lady says no she doesn't want to get rid of the chicken. She wants to keep it alive it's a pet. She tells my dad she wants the doctor to cleanse the chicken of her husband's spirit so he can rest in peace and so she can stop having nightmares. My dad tells her he doesn't think he has anything to fix that particular problem and asked if she had tried anything already. At the time he is working on a reservation in the southwest and traditional healing practices tend to take place alongside modern medicine she says yes but it didn't work. That's why she went to the clinic. She said thank you, and left with her chick TLDR, women comes into clinic with a chicken, edit, thanks for enjoying it, I didn't realize, so many people would read it, I never get karma, my dad's got a bunch more stories from his 40 odd years on medicine if anyone interested, he did his residency in Compton, California, exciting place for a doc, oh can I get on this one, so my mom before she died, her doesn't to death, was a quick one, 15 months. March 2012. She says she's getting difficulty moving joints on her right hand and elbow. Goes to doctor. Says it's fatty tumors sends her home. She starts tripping on the floor. Always to her right to start. She is saying she's getting weaker. Doctors do tests. MRIs. Blood work for endocrine disorders. Neuro diseases. Everything coming up clear. I look at all the data. I scour the internet. She has no history. Owls. I tell her neurologist, he says I'm wrong, it can't be owls. Why not? No good answer. Time goes on. 
4 months now, she's having trouble talking, starts writing everything. 9 months I buy her an iPad, because she can't write clearly. 8 months she can't stop drooling on herself, eating becomes difficult. 10 months she's wheelchair bound, neurologist accuses her of faking it. 14 months she can't swallow. 15 months dead. Doctors at the IQ ask me, when she was dying from pneumonia, how long has she had owls? Her neurologist said it wasn't owls, accused her of faking it. Scoffed when I suggested it to him, I admit owls is an outrageous diagnosis, but it was the only thing that fit. But if a patient or family says what about x thing don't scoff at them, when they ask why not. A previously healthy, young, working professional, woman in her early 30s came to the air saying she had a cold that's just been lingering, and she couldn't get over. Said she needed some antibiotics. She was actually admitted to the hospital, and just kept getting worse and worse, pneumonia to respiratory failure needing intubation slash ventilator to add to septic shock and multi-organ failure. Every possible test and study done. Running out of answers, someone decided to order an HIV test, turns out she had full blown AIDS and a CD4 count that was practically zero. Unfortunately did not survive. I popped a pimple on his side and chicken bones fell out. Obese, uneducated lady with her small dog featuring an early granulated abscess on the side of his lower abdomen the kaka? She wasn't lying. Hunya present that allowed chicken bones to perforate through small intestine directly into subcutaneous space. Doctor here. One story that sticks out is a woman who was convinced that she had helicobacter pylori bacteria that causes stomach ulcers in some and had to be tested. I reviewed her chart and it showed multiple negative tests over the years and even a biopsy sample from an upper GI scope that was negative. Her treatment for this infection was to eat dirt. Literally dirt from the internet. Advertised to cure stomach issues. There was no convincing her that this wasn't a thing. This is a tame one, but the others are too specific to tell without the possibility of revealing the patient's identity. Not a doctor, but I went to the ER, post DVT, with symptoms of a pulmonary embolism. I had chest pains, could not catch my breath, and I passed out in the waiting room. Even though I had oxygen sats below 80%, and was clearly struggling for air, the ear doctor actually patted my hand, and told me I must be stressed and tried to discharge me. I told him I refused to leave, and he needed to check with my PCP, before he did anything else. I ended up staying in the hospital for 4 days, and eventually they found a small clot in my lungs. I still couldn't walk very far without stopping by the time they discharged me. Not my patient but my dad's. In the early 70s, a guy walks in claiming that he has colon cancer and is really worried. He had a history of coming in repeatedly to the clinic for various ailments. Dad checked him out and saw no problems. Sent him back with a scheduled review. The patient still had the same worries and stuck with his claim that he had colon cancer. Dad told hi, if you want I'll give you in writing that you don't have this can you imagine that today, p and if you do, it'll take care of you. The patient stopped coming to the clinic with a complaint, but he and dad became really good friends. 40 years later he is still a hypochondriac, and dad still reassures him. Edit grandma. My best friend had weird symptoms for a while, and became obsessed with googling and researching the possible causes. She was convinced that she had multiple sclerosis. She woke up one morning and the lower half of her right side was numb. She went to an emergency care and asked for an MRI. The doctor there believed she had sciatica pain and refused. Weeks went by and she went to another urgent care and was final referred for an MRI. Turns out she had very advanced manuscript, now is partially paralyzed. Nobody really wants to be responsible for their obesity. So people google diseases that could be causing them to gain weight. My favorite was a lady who insisted that she had Cushing's disease what people mean when they say have a glandular issue. It's obvious that she wasn't. It's rare and there are some classic signs that normal obese people don't have. So I went through an exercise where we discuss all the food that she ate during a typical day. We hit roughly 3000 calories before finishing what she typically eats for lunch. The conversation never goes well from there. There is nothing that I can prescribe for denial. 
fourth year med student here, so I don't have the MD title yet. But during my pain management rotation I had a patient tell me that he had hep C. And when I asked how he got it, and when he was DX, he told me a doctor on 4chan diagnosed him a few months back after his friend told him he got cancer from too much internet usage. I shoot you not, it took me all the power of god not to bust out laughing. But then he continued to go on how Hez helped his friends out with medical advice though 4chan, and how he doesn't trust WebMD or Google for medical advice. Because they're owned by the man and only good at making people believe they have hypochondriasis. So long story short he didn't get the arc sickerdone he was hoping to get from this consultation, and made a giant fuss how, we're only making his hepsy worse by not giving him meds. Edit. For those asking dx equals diagnosis slash diagnosed, 